ladies, welcome back to my channel. Today's vlog is all about a day in my life of a journey to becoming a certified yoga teacher. So I am currently in training. I am enrolled in a 500 hour yoga teacher training program. Just completed the first 200 hours, which took me several months to complete because there's so much to learn and to actually memorize and practice that is actually taking me a little bit longer. So my biggest challenge has just been having a lot more discipline when it comes to studying every single day, at least five days a week, and actually getting on my mat. I feel when I get on the mat, I internalize a lot of the stuff that I am intellectualizing while I'm studying yoga. So I'm really excited to just bring you guys along and share with you what a day in the life looks like of a soon to be yoga teacher. In order to become certified, I have to observe other teachers teach class about 45 minutes to one hour in length because it's really cool to see how other teachers um, how they do their cues, how they choose their themes, how they make adjustments, how they switch up the music and all of those different things. So I am super inspired and today I think we're gonna choose a class from a teacher that I absolutely love. He's on YouTube. His name is Travis Elliott and by far he's one of my favorite teachers along with Sarah Wes and we're gonna go right outside and practice yoga for about an hour. It's been a challenging journey, but it's also been incredibly rewarding. One of the most important things that I've learned on this journey is the value of discipline and commitment. When I first started practicing yoga, I didn't always take it seriously, and I would skip days, make excuses, and not put in the full effort. But as I continued to practice, I realized that I wanted to get better, and I needed to be disciplined and committed. Discipline and commitment aren't just important in yoga. They're important in every aspect of our lives. If you want to achieve your goals and dreams, you need to be disciplined and committed to the process. That means showing up every day, even when you don't feel like it. It means putting in the hard work, even when it's uncomfortable. And it also means staying focused on your goals, even when there are distractions and setbacks. So during this time, I'm actually just gonna take some time to recharge and um, enjoy some Golden Girls because it always makes me feel really good. But I'm also going to write down in my yoga journal some of the biggest takeaways from today's class, things that I learned. I'm just going to take some time to reflect because I feel like that's one of the best ways that I've been able to learn is to reflect on the classes that I've been taking as well. So let me show you how to make this delicious sandwich. You are going to love it. I know when I first started making this sandwich, I had it for lunch almost every single day. So first you just want to take some sourdough bread and now you want to take some pesto sauce. I really love this pesto here. It's the red pepper and almond pesto sauce. They're both from Trader Joe's by the way. So you toast your sourdough bread and then you smear some pesto sauce all over. Then you wanna take some cheese, mozzarella, and then you wanna take some really big tomato slices. And then you can add spinach. On this other side, I'm going to take some everything but bagel seasoning. And I just sprinkle this side. And then you wanna drizzle it with some red wine vinegar. Just like that, get it nice and wet. And then just a little drizzle of olive oil. Put it together and there you have it. This is gonna be my dinner tonight. I just put it in a nice little plate and dinner's ready. Becoming a yoga teacher is my dream, but it's not just about teaching others. It's about learning and growing myself. And that's why I am so committed to my practice. Every day I'm pushing myself to be better, to learn more and develop new skills. So today is a new day and today I wanted to focus on two things. I want to share my top favorite books that I'm reading on my journey towards becoming a yoga teacher. But even if you're not becoming a yoga teacher and you just love yoga and you want to learn more about it, I am going to share all of the best books that I have found 
on my journey, I am someone who, when I become interested in a subject, I pretty much buy like all of the top rated books. In my life right now, I am currently going through just learning all about the different religions and really understanding even the subsectors within each religion because I feel like that has given me so much confidence and power over myself and it has eliminated the fear because when you don't have knowledge about a certain thing it becomes something that creates a lot of confusion within you and also a lot of fear and then you're also easily swayed by other people's projections fears and personal opinions so the best thing that i have found in my journey in spirituality and just learning about yoga and different religions has been to learn about them you know actually see why do people believe that they have monopoly over the truth it's it's just a really great way to approach life instead of not understanding why the other person or why the other group believes what they believe and that also creates judgment and i want to understand people and not judge them and i also want to remain very grounded in my own personal beliefs and in my truth and knowledge is the best way to do it so let's begin with the foundational books that i highly recommend if you are beginning a journey towards just learning about yoga deepening your own practice and again it just, it's so empowering to just learn and know about it and just to have an open mind and be curious because it just goes back to the elimination of fear. The very first books that I would recommend to begin is just really understanding the religion and the spirituality of the East, which they have their own holy scriptures, which are very ancient documents. It is called the Bhagavad Gita, the Song of God. It's a beautiful story and, whoa, life-changing book. So highly recommend this one. I got very lucky and found this 1983 version at the thrift store. And come to find out, this is the one version that a lot of scholars and uh, yogic scientists actually reference. This one is by the Vakti Vendetta Book Trust. And then if you really want to understand the Bhagavad Gita, this is a really great book because it takes you through a 30-day journey of understanding the Song of God. And each and every single day you read a passage and then you really understand. And this is honestly one of my favorite translations also because it's just so applicable to day-to-day -day life. And um, yeah, it's a copy by Harry Chaton. Two other foundational books that I recommend, the Upanishads, translation by... Eknath Eswaran, and also the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. And this is a translation by Sri Swami Sachidananda. Now, if you guys love Paramahansa Yogananda, which I am a proud fellowship member of his lessons, The Royal Path of Yoga is a really great book. It's a step-by-step -step program that outlines the basic physical exercises, mental disciplines, and ethical commitments of Raja Yoga, The Royal Path. Whether our goal is to improve our health, emotional balance, enhance creativity, or spiritual exploration, the practices Swami Rama describes here hold key. Now, speaking about understanding different sectors within yoga, also different uh, types of yoga, we have this really great book if you want to learn more about ancient Kemetic yoga, which is the yoga that originated in modern day Egypt. So the postures that you see in the pyramids, like this stuff goes way back. And they're beautiful practices also. I really, really love this book. And then I also have this one for Kundalini yoga. This one is called I Am Woman, Creative and Sacred and Invisible. Kundalini yoga as taught by Yogi Bhajan. Yeah, I've been really interested in learning more about Kundalini yoga and everything. So um, this is a really great book and I know that she is a great teacher and someone who is highly regarded in the Kundalini yoga community. Now, as far as becoming a teacher, there's two books that I highly recommend. Um, these are so full of just really everything that you need to know about becoming a yoga teacher from learning all about your bones and the muscle tissue and your spine and alignment like the anatomy of a human is also something that I had no idea I would be studying in yoga honestly not my favorite part 
to learn, but I know it's so important to know the anatomy, the human anatomy, so you can fully understand how to properly and safely demonstrate and teach yoga. So Mark Stevens has two really great books. These were actually recommended by my yoga teacher, Teaching Yoga, Essential Foundations and Techniques, and then also Yoga Sequencing. This is a book that I haven't um, looked into just yet because I'm still learning all of the essential foundations, but this one is more about just really sequencing your classes and everything, and this is something that I'm about to actually start doing next, putting together my first yoga class and my first sequence, so I'm really excited about that. And then also a book that I really love is The Language of Yin. Yin yoga is a lot more restorative, a lot more feminine in nature, a lot more soothing to the body and just a more relaxed kind of meditative way. I'm really gravitating towards teaching yin yoga just because I just love a more relaxed experience because I haven't really thought about like, well, what is the style of yoga that I really wanna teach? But I'm really leaning towards yin yoga. And so I got this really wonderful and beautiful book here. So the next book that I would love to recommend is called The Subtle Body, an Encyclopedia of Your Energetic Anatomy. This book is just, I mean, beautifully put together. So many photos and colorful images and of course information in here about the subtle body because one thing that yoga has taught me is the importance of approaching your everyday existence in a very holistic way, taking care of the mind, the body, and also the soul all together and not neglecting one or the other. So this past weekend, I was actually just learning about koshas, right? The koshas is also like subtle energetic fields within the body. I wrote down here in a little sticky note, daily practices for balanced koshas. A fitness routine, you gotta take care of the body. Pranayama, the life force energy, so breathing. Meditation for the mind. Healthy eating, reflection and learning, and asana. Doing all of those things on a daily basis balances out your koshas. And then this one, guys, I also highly recommend Total Life Cleanse, a 28-day program to detoxify and nourish the mind, the body, and the soul by Jonathan Glass. I found this book and oh my gosh, I love the yogic approach to a cleanse because it's not just a physical cleanse that we're doing here, it's also a cleanse of our subtle energy, of our mental energy, of our thoughts, of our environment. Holistic, holistic is the key word, a cleanse of everything. So I'm putting together my yoga binder, which is this three ring binder that I have here. And the reason that it's so big is because I have all of the yoga asanas, about 160, close to 170 yoga asanas. And I have it here completely listed with how to pronounce it in Sanskrit, teaching cues, injuries and modifications, things to look out for, and so on. I also have the eight limbs of yoga in here because it's something that I'm trying to learn a lot more. So the yamas, niyamas, the asanas, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, samadhi, and that's it. <laughs> I also have some flashcards in here for the poses. Honestly, when I first started learning the yoga postures, I felt like that was the most overwhelming part of this process aside from the anatomy which was very challenging but the poses i was just like how am i going to remember them but honestly the best way to learn the postures is by actually practicing yoga so this is my binder now there are a few things that i need to include in my binder and this book here the art and business of teaching yoga was also recommended by my yoga teacher this is a copy by amy ibutoli and terrell smith phd and it has like the marketing plan. It has basically everything you need to launch your business as a yoga teacher. And they have this really great section in here for building a teacher binder. I'm also going to keep a mission statement of why I'm even teaching yoga. And I feel like it's just such a great reminder to have it like as one of the first things inside of your yoga binder, just to remind you on the more challenging days why you actually love teaching and learning about yoga. My values for my business and as a yoga teacher, themes, class plans, 
Um, quotes, oh my gosh, so many different quotes that I, I'm gonna go on Pinterest and actually create a document of all of my favorite quotes so I can talk about them during a class. Now it's time for a little meditation because we definitely have to practice what we preach. I'm gonna do about a 20 minute meditation and I've actually been meditating with mudras, which are hand gestures and I've been learning so much about them. I actually went online and I'm really excited to order some books about mudras, mudras. Something that I learned is that each of the five fingers represents an element. So we have, I wrote them down right here. So we have the fire element, air, space, like ether. We have earth and we have water, right? So when we do the Gyan Mudra, which is a very common mudra, and this is the one that I've been meditating with. I've also been meditating with this one here, which is what you see um, like Buddha meditating with. I believe it's Buddha. <laughs> um, but it's very like, you know, it inspires a lot of wisdom, a lot of inner peace and calmness and love, right? So the one that I'm actually meditating with is the Gyan Mudra. And you basically just put your thumb and your index finger together, and then the other three fingers are nice and straight. And you kind of want to put a little bit of pressure, almost like you're holding a piece of paper. And then you want to have them facing up, right? You want to have them facing up during the daytime because you're activating solar energy. And then if you're meditating at night with the Gyan Mudra, I learned that you need to put your hands facing down because you're activating the lunar energy. So according to yoga, the right side of our body is the solar side of the body, and then the left is the lunar side of the body. So when we're doing the mudras with both hands, we are now stimulating the solar energy and the lunar energy and bringing balance into our body. The Gyan Mudra is really great for wisdom, for focus, and for internal awareness, which makes it a really great mudra for meditation. If you really want to concentrate right here on your third eye, bring your vision up here into your third eye, and it really helps you really get into the gap, the space between your thoughts, because you're activating a lot more alertness and focus and it just brings really nice balance in the body. I definitely feel a different sense of energy and it's also very important to meditate with your spine nice and erect. You don't wanna be slouching because you want the energy to really travel up through your spine and up here into your third eye. Put a timer on my phone for 20 minutes and I just sit right here with my hands in this position, either right here or just relaxed down by the knees. You want your shoulders to be nice and relaxed also. And just maintain this mudra and you're definitely gonna feel a different kind of shift within your body. I know when I do this power mudra right here, you see a lot of people in power do this mudra. It just feels, you feel the energy, you feel some sort of electrifying current kind of running through your body from my experience also. So if you need power, do this. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this has inspired you to pursue your own dreams and goals, whatever they may be. Remember, it's not always easy, but if you stay disciplined and committed, you can achieve anything you set your mind to.